Hi everyone, welcome to the newest edition of I Am In Your Living Room. I'm Tyler Nicole and today Christina and I are joined by Lauren Galley. Lauren is an author, mentor, actress, model, and honor student who also owns a company called Girls Above Society. Girls Above Society has been featured on tons of news outlets including Teen Vogue, The Huffington Post, and The Chelsea Cross Show. As her website states, Girls Above Society empowers tween and teen girls to be confident while maintaining positive morals and values as they face the tough pressures of today's society. Welcome to I Am In Your Living Room, Lauren, and congratulations on all your success. Thank you so much. So to start off, um, for some people that maybe don't really know much about your organization, can you tell us a little bit about your company, Girls um, Above Society? Yes, Girls Above Society is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to promoting self-confidence and leadership skills in young girls. So I travel around the U.S. speaking to girls and doing what I call my signature girl talks, which is where I meet with a group of girls face-to-face -face and we do activities and it's just a safe environment to discuss those social pressures that we all face. Yeah. And I also have an online magazine, Girl Power, on my website. So it's a com Girls Above Society is a combination of online resources and face-to-face -face interaction that's just all about being confident, believing in yourself, and having really positive mentors. That's a really great message and a really great platform to start, you know, a company on because that's so important for girls today. So how did you get the idea for your company? I saw that there was a serious need for positive mentors and just a way for girls to learn how to gain self-esteem because you know in the media it's it's almost like we can't do anything right you're either too skinny or you're too fat or you know you don't look like this or that or you know you're dressed too provocatively or you're too prude you know nothing you do is ever right so girls no matter what they look like they're all insecure for different reasons and I just realized, you know, why is there no positive media outlets? Or why is there no one standing against this and saying, you know what, this isn't right? So I said, well, why don't I be that person? You know, I'm relatable. I'm going through the pressures myself. And maybe that will inspire my peers to do the same thing and stand up and say, no, you know what, I am who I am. And that should be OK. I shouldn't have to look a certain way to appease you. Yeah, I think that's awesome. That is so um, something so similar that we're trying to do it. I am with the whole positive media um, outlet. So love the support, how we can, you know, have a couple of places like this where we can all band together and support each other. So um, we saw that you gave a TEDx talk. So can you tell us a little bit what that experience was like and what were the topics that you kind of focused on there? Yes, my TEDx talk was called hashtag text me the elimination of human interaction. And it was all about how, specifically young people, we use our phones and our laptops and social media to communicate with each other, which seemingly isn't a bad thing, but when that becomes our only way that we communicate, it's really affecting the types of relationships that we're gaining, and it's affecting our schoolwork, the way we write essays, and it's kind of dumbing us down as a society. So that was what my TEDx talk was about. And when I was asked by my school, Lone Star College Chamball, to do the TEDx, I was so excited and honored because I really loved TED for a long time. Um, but I was it was one of the scariest things I've ever done. I was very nervous. And I do public speaking all the time. But it was just because I'm like, this is TED. This is a big deal. And I... You know, I rehearsed for months. I had all my information. I knew it all. I could say it, you know, backwards in my sleep. But my biggest fear was that I was going to trip after I was done because I just envisioned me giving this awesome talk and everyone clapping and me walking away and falling, and then that's all they would remember. <laughs> Luckily, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. I walked, and then when I got off stage, I was like, phew, like I finally was like so relieved and happy. So it was a really good experience, and it's a really great way for... Um, people all around the world to hear my message. You know, I can only speak to so many girls face to face, so it's really nice to have that opportunity to spread a message that I'm so passionate about. That's so awesome. So, what do you think Girls Above Society has that makes it so successful? I think that Girls Above Society is really unique because 
you know, there's me, a 19-year-old, behind it. And there's a lot of really amazing organizations and groups that promote self-confidence and they promote anti-bullying and all the things that I stand for. But there's usually not, there's either not a real face behind the company or if there is, they're older, which there's something wrong with that. But I think Girls Above Society is really great because, you know, moms always joke with me, like, I'll do a girl talk and I'll tell the girl something. The moms will say, okay, how come I've told her that a million times and she rolls her eyes? But you say that, and she, you know, all of a sudden she gets it, and she goes, "Oh my gosh, she's right, finally." And I always say, because I'm not her mom, and because I'm going through the pressures too, so it's really relatable. And I found that that's really what makes it work: is that when I say I understand what you're going through, I really do, because I'm either going through the same thing, or it was just a few years ago that I was. Yeah, no, that's totally awesome. So what is the proudest moment that you've had as the founder of Girls Above Society? The proudest moment? Probably when I published my first book and I got the first copy in the mail and I was holding it and I realized I wrote this. You know, this was me. This is all the hours I put into it and it's my message. And I was really proud in that moment and I didn't even want to put the book down after I got the first copy, I wanted to like sleep with it under my pillow and just keep it with me forever. So that was probably the proudest moment so far. Yeah, so my dream is to publish my own book. So I think that's so awesome that you've done it like already at your age. I think that's so amazing. Thank you. Um, how would you like to see Girls Above Society grow and evolve in the future? My goal is to take it you know, as worldwide as I can. As of right now, I've been traveling nationally. I've traveled all over the country speaking, which is really amazing. But, you know, America isn't the only place that girls have social pressures. And I was actually kind of surprised when I did a pen pal project with these young girls that live in Ghana, Africa. And we emailed. And um, we I was kind of a mentor to them and we talked about the social pressures that they were facing and I was really kind of shocked to discover that their their pressures were the same as ours they dealt with bullying and they dealt with you know I'm not pretty enough to hang out with the girls at school or I'm trying to make my parents proud it was all the same issues so that was my big inspiration you know to make it my goal to travel to other countries and speak to girls of all different cultures and types because I really discovered from doing this that the idea of self-confidence and believing in yourself and following your dreams, it's really a universal idea. So there's not any girl that doesn't relate to that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we really wish you luck for that. I definitely can see that happening for you. So what is the biggest challenge you've had to overcome as a founder of a successful company? I would say say the biggest challenge has probably been organization and trying to balance schoolwork and my social life and also having my own organization, all my extracurricular things that I did. There was times where I felt really overwhelmed. But once I figured out, you know, how to make a schedule and how to prioritize, now I'm I'm like the most organized person ever because I've learned so many mistakes and had so many times where I was so overwhelmed going oh my gosh, I have 11 things I have to do by the end of the week. But when I stopped and thought about it, I thought, well, I could have done these things earlier and I could have better prioritized my time. And, you know, you can also plan times to relax too. That is so true. Like, organization is, like, the biggest thing in anything that you do. Yeah. So aside from being organized, what advice do you have for someone passionate about starting their own company or organization? My advice would be to just network as much as you can and reach out to as many people who are doing something similar or mentors who could help you because I've always been one of those people where I'm very independent and I want to do things myself. But I got to a point where I realized, okay, I can't do this myself. You know, I really need help from people who have been there, done that. So I was really amazed when I reached out to others and other organizations and people that I now call my mentors how receptive they were and how much people really do want to help you accomplish your dreams. You just have to let them know that you want help. You just have to ask, you know, and the worst thing they can say is, oh, sorry, I can't help you. And then you just ask someone else. And so I've gotten a real lot of really great advice that way and a lot made a lot of really amazing contacts that if I hadn't have stuck myself out there, I would have never done that. 
Yeah, totally. So um, maybe it's a mentor or maybe it's someone you've never even met, but who is someone that you look up to as far as a successful business person? Hmm, there's so many. Um, one of the first people that comes to mind would be Emma Watson, the actress. Um, she's Hermione in Harry Potter. <laughs> and I just, I really look up to her because she got put in Hollywood at such a young age and yet she didn't succumb to the pressures and she's really stayed herself and she still got a college education and she still tries her best to be a normal kid but she's also very particular about the way that people perceive her in the media and she's very supportive of the idea of women's rights and she's all girl power and girls believing in themselves and she even talks about how you know no I'm not like the stick thin model on the runway but she's never let that get her down and she's very particular about the parts that she takes, the roles, because she doesn't want to be perceived negatively in the media. And I think that's really cool that she's been offered a lot of really big roles after Harry Potter and turn them down because she says, no, I don't, I'm not comfortable doing that. That doesn't really express who I am in the best way. So that's really inspiring for me. Yeah, that's awesome. It's, I think, like, I'm also an actress, and I think that it's really good to be, like, selective about what you do and, like, know what you're doing before you got yourself into it. But um, on another note, um, here at IAM, you might be familiar with our Smartest Sexy campaign. Smarts are a quality to be admired, and we believe you can have beauty and brains at the same time. So what qualities do you think are the most smart and sexy about like a, a person? I completely love that campaign, by the way. I think it's awesome, and I am a true believer in that as well. Um, I think some great qualities to have is just being yourself. You know, that's my big thing. If you want to go against the trend and do your own thing, then I think you should. You know, it's almost smart to that. And I think, you know, girls try so hard to measure up to this idea of perfect and to do what they think they're supposed to do, that they lose themselves. And that's why girls are depressed and they feel lonely is because they're not truly being who they are. So whenever I realized that and I started just being myself and not really caring what people thought, I was so much happier. So I would say that's one of the best things you could do for yourself. Yeah, totally agree with that. So um, society, especially for girls, creates such a stereotype that smart and sexy are mutually exclusive. So you either are smart and you're like nerdy or you're sexy and you're stupid. So how is Girls Above Society trying to change that perception? I always tell girls that, you know, being smart is one of the best things you can be. And my, um, one of my slogans is to be confident, beautiful, and smart. And... Um, a lot of times I'll see girls dumb themselves down because they think that that will help them get a guy or because they see other girls do that, you know, the quote popular girls, and they think that's considered cool, so they do that. But I always tell girls to be yourself, and if someone is intimidated by your intelligence or they don't like the fact that you're smart, then they're honestly just jealous. That's the only reason anyone would feel that way. So I say if you're really interested in politics or if you're really interested in science fiction or whatever it is, just study that and learn as much as you can because you'll be really grateful later on when you look back on your life that you weren't just trying to appease everyone else and that you really learned everything you wanted to. You know, that's I think that knowledge is one of the best things you can give yourself because no one can take that away from you. So I say be as smart as possible and if that if people don't like that then you shouldn't waste your time on them I think that's so true and I think that's a really good message to you know get out to those younger girls so who is someone you think it embodies everything that you're saying embodies the idea that smart is sexy hmm there's a lot of people um, totally it's a really hard first comes to mind. <laughs> First that comes to mind is, you know, some of the mentors that I've met going through all of this. Um, Becca Moore is one of my mentors. She's really amazing, and she is a big advocate of the THINK program, which means to think before you speak, type, or text. Ask yourself, is what I'm saying true, helpful, inspiring, necessary, and kind? And if it's not, then you don't say it. And she's an administrator of private schools so she deals a lot with girl on girl bullying and she's been a really big supporter of Girls Above Society. We work together a lot and 
she is one of the smartest people I know, but she's so gorgeous, and we always joke around because she always has her high heels on. She's all into fashion, and I think people assume that she's not as smart and as much of a go-getter as she is, but then when she opens her mouth, you know, she does not take no for an answer, and she always surprises people, and I think that's really awesome that she's not afraid to channel both of those sides. Yeah, no, that is awesome. That's She's definitely someone that I think girls could definitely look up to. Okay, so now we're going to move on to some lighter questions. We call them our rapid-fire questions. So basically, we're just going to ask you a question, and you have to say the first thing that comes to your mind. So would you rather okay. wear heels or flats? Mm, flats. Um, if you were on a deserted island, what three things would you bring with you? Um, okay, I'd bring a really good book. Um, I would bring food and water, if that's something I can bring. Uh -huh. um, and I would bring something to play music. Speaking of music, what is your go-to karaoke song? Hmm, go-to karaoke song. Probably something with a lot of girl power, something by Beyonce or that uh -huh. I could totally jam out to. <laughs> Always. <laughs> um, do you prefer the beach or the mountains? The beach. Yeah. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Are you an early bird or a night owl? Definitely a night owl. <sighs> um, what is your number one Starbucks order? Um, a caramel frappuccino with extra caramel, and they cannot forget the extra caramel. So good. Oh, that's important. <laughs> So would you rather be dressed up for a night out or your pajamas for a night in? Hmm, I say pajamas for a night in. I like that. I dig that. <laughs> um, what is the last book you read? The last book I read. Right now, I am reading Malala's book. Um, Malala, she was shot by the Taliban because she believes in education for girls, and that's really inspiring. So that's what I'm reading right now. Awesome. So interesting. Okay, so here I am. We have an anti-bullying social media campaign called, using the hashtag, Be the One Who, working to create a community of support for those experiencing bullying to let them know that they aren't alone. So as a free-to-be-you advocate, what is your advice for someone who is being bullied? My advice is definitely to tell someone. Even if you think, oh, it's not that big of a deal, I can handle it, I don't want to get them in trouble, always just tell someone, even if nothing needs to be done about it, just getting it off your chest and having someone that you can talk to is so important because it's when you keep things bottled up that you're just going to explode. And so to avoid that, just communication is really key. Yeah. I totally agree with you. That's always the best route to go, I think. Um, so you are an advocate for the hashtag Be That Girl. How do you suggest teens find their own self and stand out from the pressures of society? I always encourage girls to ask themselves what's more important to them in life. You know, what are their goals, what are their dreams, and who do they what do they really see when they picture themselves in the future? And that says a lot about who you are. And then take a look at who you actually are embodying and say, am I really being myself or am I being what society wants me to be? And a lot of times without even realizing it, we're following trends and saying certain things because our peers are doing it. So in order to, you know, be that girl, you have to let go of society's norms and expectations and just be yourself, whether that's wearing overalls to school or, you know, being the nerdy girl or wearing high heels every day, you know, whatever that is, just do it. And I think people really will be surprised by how much respect you'll get from your peers for just being yourself. And if someone makes fun of you, just say, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. This is who I am, and I'm not changing it for you. And if more people did that, I think it would become the cool thing to be different and be unique, and that wouldn't be considered such a negative. Yeah, absolutely. I think that a lot of girls and guys could definitely benefit from that advice. It's something that a lot of people do need to hear. So at I Am, we think fashion is a great way to showcase your creativity and personality, so we love to hear from our guests how they use fashion in their everyday lives. So what is your go-to outfit that makes you feel the most confident? 
I really like to wear um, like sundresses and cute flats a lot. That's kind of my go-to with like a simple piece of jewelry. Um, I just feel really pretty when I wear that. And you know, I live in Texas where most of the time it's pretty warm outside. So it's a good way to keep cool and still look really cute. And you know, that's great if you're going shopping or you're going to lunch or you're just running errands. You know, that's a good basic look for me. That sounds so cute. So, who is your fashion icon? Hmm. I would say Lauren Conrad. She can pull off pretty much any look, and she always looks so cute, you know, even when she's just wearing jeans and a t-shirt, she always finds a way to look really cute while she's doing it. And then, of course, when she's on the red carpet, she looks great as well. So, she's the first person that comes to mind. Yeah, I love Lauren Conrad. She's awesome. Okay, so thank you so much, Lauren, for joining us for this latest edition of I Am In Your Living Room. If you would like to know more about the Girls Above Society, you can visit their website at www.girlsabovesociety.org. Make sure to check in the description box below to follow Lauren and Girls Above Society on social media. Also be sure to check out Lauren's free online magazine and look out for her new book, Steps to Success, an Empowerment Guide, and Kissing Frogs in Search of Prince Charming, due to premiere on Amazon this fall. Thank you everyone for watching, and see you next time. Bye, Lauren. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.